I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about RH incompatibility. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to describe is, well, what is the RH? What is that about? So it's a protein found on the surface of your red blood cells. So if you have that protein, you're RH positive, and if you don't have it, you're RH negative. So an example of this would be, you say your blood type is O positive. So the positive is the RH, or O negative, then you don't have it. So that's where this comes into play. So this whole thing is a big issue when moms are RH negative and the fetus is RH positive. If you are an RH positive mom, then this does not concern you at all. This is not an issue. This only concerns women who are RH negative. So our big concern is isoimmunization. So for that to occur, the fetus must be positive and the mom must be negative. There needs to be at least 0.1 ml of fetal red blood cells that enters mom's circulation. And now that can happen at any time during pregnancy, labor, delivery, postpartum, but nine times out of 10, it will happen during labor after the placenta has separated. And then three, mom must produce anti-D antibodies. So mom's immune system has to be strong enough to make these antibodies. So basically what's happening is think of like an allergic reaction, okay? So your body is being exposed to something. It's never been exposed to it before. It recognizes it as foreign, but it doesn't necessarily do anything about it. It just goes, I'm going to remember you. I'm going to remember you. And then the next baby happens and it's RH positive and the body goes, oh, I remember you from before. You don't belong here. I'm going to destroy you. Okay, so think of it as a reaction like that. So the first pregnancy, nothing happens. She produces the antibodies, but nothing happens to her or the baby. Subsequent pregnancies, mom's body will attack baby's body because they don't match, because it looks like foreign, okay? So this is an issue for subsequent pregnancies, and antibodies can cross the placenta. So in the first pregnancy, she's making the antibodies. So they're not going anywhere because she's making them. In subsequent pregnancies, she already has those antibodies and they can cross the placenta and cause harm and even fetal death to the baby. And that's our biggest concern here is we don't want that to happen because women can't help it if they're Rh negative or positive, right? So obviously we don't want this to happen, right? We want to prevent this and we want the woman to have a healthy pregnancy and have a healthy baby. So. There are things we can do to prevent it and tests we can do so that we can detect it. Now let's talk about Rogam. So Rogam is what we give to our RH negative moms to prevent isoimmunization from happening in the first place. So Rogam is made from human plasma. All of my students at the beginning of my OB class, I give them a med list and I always put Rogam on the list and I always make a point to say, Rogam is not a medication. It is actually made from human plasma. It is a human blood product. So you're not probably going to find it in your drug book, but it is very important and it is given via IM injection. Something you need to keep in mind about this as well, if your patient has cultural considerations or religious considerations where they do not want blood products or they refuse that kind of things, you need to know that about them, okay? Because this is one of those type of things. So it's made from human plasma. It works by coating and destroying any fetal red blood cells that have made their way into mom's circulation. And I know that sounds like, oh my gosh, we're destroying the fetal red blood cells. But these are the ones that are in mom's circulation. This is not gonna hurt the fetus at all, okay? So this does no harm to the baby. Its whole goal is to prevent something called erythroblastosis fetalis. So basically what that is, is mom's been sensitized, right? She's been, the isoimmunization has happened. She's been sensitized, her body's made the antibodies, okay? So it's preventing the antibodies from then going and attacking and causing hemolysis of the baby's red blood cells. Because if we did absolutely nothing and this occurred, 
it would kill the fetus, it would kill the baby. And we don't want that to happen, right? So the whole point of this rogam is to prevent this from happening. When do we give it? So we give it to all moms at 28 weeks. We give it within 72 hours after delivery if baby is RH positive. After any bleeding episodes, so this could be minor bleeding like spotting, this could be major things like placenta previa or an abrupto placenta, whatever, it doesn't matter. If mom is bleeding at all during pregnancy, she's getting a rogam. Sometimes we do testing on these women that might cause some bleeding. So if we do something like an amniocentesis, she might need to get a rogam after that. And then also after spontaneous abortion, miscarriage. Moms need to get rogam. And I guarantee you that is an NCLEX question. So RH negative moms absolutely need to get a rogam after miscarriage or elective abortions. It doesn't matter. Any bleeding, they need a rogam. And then it is given via IM injection, which is why I include it on that med sheet, even though it's not really a med. Let's talk a little bit more about the testing. Now let's talk about testing. The big test with this is the Coombs test. This is an antibody titer, and it is checking to see if mom has been sensitized from the previous, you know, RH positive fetus. If it is positive, then this is going to be monitored frequently throughout the pregnancy and it's going to be checking for rising levels of antibodies. Mom may need an amniocentesis, a PUBS. Sometimes the PUBS is called a cordiocentesis, so kind of the same concept as the amniocentesis, except it's taking um, blood from the cord. And then an ultrasound. If the fetus is positive, so a lot of times when we're doing this, we know mom's blood type and RH factor, but we don't know the babies, we don't know the fetuses, so we just kind of assume and treat them as if they're going to be positive when mom is RH negative. In this case, when we've done testing, we can actually tell. We actually know, like, okay, the baby is positive or negative. So let's say we know the baby is positive, then we'll do a Kleinhauer Bakke blood test. And this is done to estimate the number of fetal red blood cells in mom's circulation. So remember, we need that 0.1 ml of fetal blood cells in mom's circulation to even like cause an issue. So we're checking to see how much is in there. So there could be more, there could be less, that kind of thing. So this is the testing that's routinely done in our RH negative moms who've maybe had prior exposure. So. That was my video on RH incompatibility. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.